Kamla Das, through her writings, attempts a neat toppling over of the patriarchal ideological base of the Indian society. But even while exposing the limits of its domestic contract, the compromises inherent to its social fabric, the pitfalls of its system of education, and above all, the complete resistance to feminist gender critique, even as she problematizes the relationship between women and society, she also problematizes the very categories of masculine and feminine. I quote from a poem titled Kanashem. But if he is you and I am you, who is loving who? Who is the husk? Who is the kernel? Where is the body? Where is the soul? You come in strange forms and your names are many. She often constructs heterosexual identity in terms of the homosexuality it excludes, then experiencing and celebrating it as absence and loss. We see the exposing of femininity as freakish or as people like Mary Russo have pointed out, the, construct the construction of femaleness itself as a stunt. I quote, the heart, an empty cistern, waiting through long hours, fills itself with the coiling snakes of silence. I am a freak. It's only to save my face. I flaunt, at times, a grand flamboyant lust. This is from the poem, The Freaks. Her poetry is thus subversive in that, as probably Butler would say, it reflects the mundane impersonations by which heterosexually ideal genders are performed and naturalized and undermine their power by virtue of that exposure. I would like to quote another poem. It was not to gather knowledge of yet another man that I came to you, but to learn what I was and by learning to learn to grow. But every lesson you gave me was about yourself. You were pleased with my body's response, its weather, its usual shallow convulsions. You dribbled spittle into my mouth you poured yourself into every nook and cranny. You embalmed my poor lust with your bitter sweet juices. You called me wife. I was taught to break saccharine into your tea and to offer at the right moment the vitamins. Covering beneath your monstrous ego, I ate the magic loaf and became a dwarf. I lost my will and reason to all your questions, I mumbled incoherent replies. Thus, many of her poems, if you, if, you, if you look at them very closely, configure heterosexual marriage as uh, both uh, what we can call a compulsory system and also as an intrinsic comedy, uh, as Butler would say, a, cons a, a constant parody of itself. One gets the feeling that the poet is playing with the reader performatively recreating in the reader the effects of a compulsory heterosexual marriage in the process pushing and critiquing the limits of social codes through poetic expression. Even as she attempts to construct discursively the experience of sexuality of Indian women, discerning women's sexuality as a lexical gap in our literature and language, she was also one of the earliest of our women writers to perceive gender as an act with a keen awareness that, as in other social rituals and dramas, gender also demands performances that are stylized and repeated. I quote from the poem, The Suicide, but I must pose, I must pretend, I must act the role of happy woman, happy wife." Unquote. Flaunting the assumption that she as a woman poet speaks her gender, she subverts this gender essentialism by performing a hyper-femininity, dramatizing and performing her role as woman and poet in the process 
undermining the very orthodoxies associated with these roles. As Mary Rousseau suggests, to put on femininity with a vengeance suggests the power of taking it off. Many of her poems are spectacular and theatrical, especially the ones dealing with and revealing the artifices of femininity. These performances of gender, while reenacting hegemonic roles and games, always already socially established and conventionalized, also legitimize gender through repeated mundane and ritualized public performances to produce apparently coherent gendered subjects.